Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M C C A R T H Y S at AmherstMA.gov. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. Um, and take a roll call of attendance. Helly. Here. Guest on. Here. And I am here, and we have two people absent. Dylan might um, be in a little bit later, briefly. He's got another meeting, it seems. So um, let's get started on the renewals. We have, um, what are we, oh my goodness. Okay, so we start no, we do, with. Um, I do believe we have Brian for a limited amount of time today. So oh, okay. um, if the board was so inclined, we could skip to that discussion and uh, and take up renewals after that. Okay, that sounds good to me. Um, first of all, okay. just to make sure, is anyone here for public comment, um, comment unrelated to anything else on the agenda? I don't see anyone at all. So we'll just go right to Brian Riley um, and the license that is going to be available as of January 1st. Okay. Um, so I've, you know, had some back and forth over the last few months with Steve about this place. Um, and it sounds like uh, they did not apply to renew and there's no transfer pending. So these are annual licenses that expire on December 31st. So it seems like that's going to happen. And this, this is a off-premises license, correct, Steve? All alcohol? Yes, it is. And, and, and just to clarify, we may want to um, follow up about this another time, but um, they did submit an incomplete application for renewal and um, right. verbally stated they would not be renewing. But um, I think, as you mentioned before, we the board may want to take that application and then just deny it in that case. But um, um, well, yeah, we, we we could talk about that a bit. I mean, if it's not complete, it's not complete. Um, you know, to, you have you have to get a complete application in by November 30 in order to, you know, kind of qualify to for <clears throat> automatic renewal. Um, okay, well, we can talk about that, Steve, if we need to. But um, yes, the crux of the issue is yeah, this um this license has become available. There's a lot of interest in it. And um, I think uh, this is a new situation for the board, and I think um, the board is looking for just some some guidance on what factors they can um, consider as they take applications, what um, you know, what form these applications can take, what form selection can take, um, and questions like that. And we did get your your excellent brief there. Okay. Well, yeah. If, you, if you've seen that, that was kind of everything I I could think of on on the subject. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, just just briefly, I know there was some, you know, questions raised, well, is there a way to sort of, you know, auction this off and, you know, find out who really wants this? Um, it would be a nice, be nice if we could, but we, the town simply can't, um, you know, that you can only charge a fee relative to this license that's tied at least to a reasonable basis on the expenses the town has in dealing with these licenses. Typically, alcohol license fees are higher than other things like a, common victualler or uh you know any number of other ones uh because there is a lot more involved and uh and there's inspections during the year and whatnot but um the amount of money that a town can get out of this licensing process you know is kind of tied to well how much did it cost you to to deal with it uh and this emerson college test which is i don't know 35 years old at this point i think says you know a reasonable fee is fine if it's if it's uh, too high and you're clearly just raising revenue then that's an illegal tax because you're not allowed to raise revenue unless you have statutory authorization to do it mm -hmm. um i've heard from many licensing boards over the years that they're frustrated because they you know they know word on the street word on the street that uh, this person who's coming in for a transfer is paying the current license holder a hundred thousand dollars for it but the ABCC has told me that's that's outside Chapter 138. It's not our business, and it's not your business, Steve. Um, 
So, you know, in terms of how to make it available, um, you know, as I, as I said a couple times in my, in my memo, um, you know, you, you could just sort of take the first application for this license you receive, hold a hearing on it, and approve or deny it. I know I'll get the factors you can look at in a bit. Um, I guess the, you know, especially if it's something you expect to have a lot of interest, you know, maybe you'll get a number of other applications. Uh, kind of the downside to that is, let's say you get the first application, you hold the hearing, and that does not get approved uh, for any number of reasons. You know, the intersection's on a dangerous corner, or, you know, there's there's uh, two off-premises licenses a half a mile down the road, and we'd like to see it go somewhere else. Whatever that might be, those are all legitimate reasons. But the person who was denied does have the ability to appeal to the ABCC. And, you know, maybe a hearing gets scheduled three months down the road, and maybe you get a decision from the ABCC within the next six or eight months. You're never quite sure. So, you know, that would tie the thing up. Um, the other way, which I've seen some towns do, and it seems to have worked, you know, worked well, is the uh, that the commission could say, you know, we're, we're going to have this license available. It's not available yet. We're going to kind of set a, a period where anyone who's interested can file an application. So let's just say hypothetically you get five, um, you know, between January 1st and January 10th or whatever. Um, and so then when that's done and you see and you've got applications and they've all filed everything they're supposed to, you then you can kind of do it, whether it's on one night or over a couple of nights, you kind of give them all a hearing, hear, hear their pitch, hear why they think their, their business plan and their location and their manager, you know, we have a manager who's been doing this for 20 years, um, uh, you know, get all their, pros and cons that you might see with them. Uh, and then you, you know, close those hearings and then the commission can, um, uh, you know, debate. And then you can kind of say, well, I move to give it to, you know, applicant X. And if you take a vote and they get a majority, then you're done. Uh, if they don't get a majority, then I guess you can move on to the next one. Anytime you do deny somebody, you need to state the reasons whether it's, you know, bad location, um, uh, you know, they're, they're um, well, I'm not going up with anything off the top of my head, but, you know, whatever the, the reasons were that, that the majority of people voted against it, because that's what they have an appeal on. But then if, if you, when you do a, approve it to somebody, let's say you approve it to applicant X, um, then, you know, pending the ABCC approval, uh, that license has been awarded, and with the other four people, you can simply vote to deny because we now no longer have a license available for you. And I guess theoretically, somebody could appeal on that, but I don't understand why they would. Um, you know, that's not the kind of thing the ABCC is going to be interested in. Uh, they just want to know if the board made a reasonable decision uh, when they voted no, and can't get much more reasonable than we don't have a license to give you. So, um, it, so those are my, oh, sorry. Just, just to clarify, so we only have to give reasons if someone's made a motion and we've denied it. If we just grant to the first one, I just want to clarify, then we don't have to give a yeah, reason you, for anybody you, else. You don't have okay. to specify the reasons for approval. Just, you know, I, I move we approve this license for applicant X and it passes five to zero or four to one. Um, you know, that's approved. You don't need to, explain why but if you deny somebody you do need to give a reason the reason reason or reasons why that's yeah. good feedback before we make a motion when we do that yeah yeah um let's see so that's you know i've been at this quite a while <laughs> and uh i know i know the abcc is fine with doing that either of these ways you know first in the door give them a hearing, make a decision. Uh, but they, I know they're also fine with, with this sort of, let's have all the hearings at once and then, and then uh, you know, pick one. Yes, Tom. Thank you so much, um, Brian. So the, um, 
I have questions about like timing of things, but we can save those for later. Right now on the idea of hearing a bunch at once, my question is how could we um, hear a bunch at once and then, um, you know, in some way deliberate about which motion to approve we make. That would, that would, you know, any other application at that point is impossible, um, but I'm just, you know, it seems like we can't come up with reasons to choose one without implicitly um, giving reasons why we're denying others. And, and so I, I wonder if, if that approach does get used when you have multiple, when, they, when you have multiple um, applications heard at once, how do the boards uh, manage the process of selecting which one to approve before uh, denying any. Yeah, I, I mean, I do hear what you're saying because if um, even if one of them, you know, one of the five, let's say, uh, there's a motion to approve it and you do approve it, you know, you would have had discussion before that on, you know, why why they're better. For example, um, well, the you know four of these are all on the west side of town and the east side of town is kind of underserved and here's this one from the east side so i think that's a big factor i mean that that's true um but uh so so i i think you you know i, th I think you do have to there are those I, things are going to come out in the discussion okay but I, I do think you know at the end of the at the end of it um if <clears throat> if then you go to a motion and maybe maybe it sort of becomes you know uh apparent to the commissioners that well it seems like we're kind of leaning towards this one so i'm going to make a motion we approve that one um yeah. I, I still think it's it's legitimate to okay. de deny the other four based on no available license okay all right very 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 good and so i mean as a matter of being um uh be, being skillful in our deliberation, one approach could be to hear one at a time and basically just identify what we liked about each one after. Yeah. And then yeah, see yeah, at the but, end of the process, we it's kind of obvious based on what we said we liked about them, but we don't we don't say anything negative. We just say what <laughs> we liked about each one. And then at the end, we kind of look at each other and um and get a get an inspiration to yeah. make a motion yeah that that's right yeah you're gonna you're gonna do a hearing on each one let them tell you anything they want to tell you you ask questions they get answers i mean you get answers mm -hmm. um and then when you've done that you you close the hearing yeah. you don't make a decision yet but you close the hearing and you go on to the next next hearing okay, okay. yeah um since it sounds like we're kind of going to go, we're leaning towards at this point, option number two that you have presented us. We recently adopted our alcohol regulations and we kind of had a criteria for issuing licenses. Would that be a good way to start with criteria for one of these licenses? And if so, would you recommend that we publish those ahead of time so that applicants know that what we are looking for, or is that opening ourselves up to questions or is it better to present them at the hearing are um are those regulations on the town website or not i think are they on there steve i don't think they are yet but i can pull them up here okay um <clears throat> i mean I, I don't i mean you, you've adopted them so you know you're going obviously going to be looking to them I don't see it. I don't I don't think I see a downside to, uh, you know, notifying if anyone's going to apply for this license, you know, we're going to, you know, the, the, the commission has following set of regulations. Here's how you get to the how you read them. I don't think it's I don't think there's a downside to having that out there early. Okay. Um, so they've seen them before. Gaston? Um, I have the couple questions about timing. The, the first one is um, where the license becomes available due to non-renewal, when does it formally become 
uh, available is that you know as a a function of 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 of, of law or does someone have to decide something for it to be formally available um well he's I mean, this doesn't happen that much, to be honest. But uh, you know, by 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 the terms in Chapter One Thirty Eight, the license is only good through December thirty first. So I don't. Uh, okay. You know, it gets complicated when a license gets you know revoked, for example, because somebody owes a bunch of state taxes, and so the you know the state's not gonna the state kind of has its claws into it for a while. There's mm -hmm. a variety of things which can come up. This one, I think, is just going to expire. So, okay, I think uh, you know, I don't think we have to get it. We don't have to get approval from the ABCC yeah. to mm -hmm. reissue it. Okay, and and so then my follow up question is that that, that seems to suggest if we're going to use the the window period to collect applications, we should announce that window before January first. Yeah, I, I know that means you know having another meeting before the end of the year, but uh, we we, we, we um, planned on it. Oh, okay. I think that would be good. Uh, otherwise, you know, let's say, you know, let's say you haven't announced that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, 9 a.m. January 2nd, somebody gets in and says, aha, you have to consider me first. It gets a little um, messy. So I think it would make sense. And I, I can okay. work with Steve to sort of help, you know, okay. put a, in a press release or whatever we want to call it out there. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. And so okay. then, the, then the related question for us is what feels like a good collection period and um and and then i guess i imagine there's that we're not going to find very explicit um uh, guidance but how slow can we be you know from the time let's say we say a two week or four week collection window or whatever we decide but then you know how long before we need to start having hearings and so on yeah I believe um, I'm remembering it right, and I think I am. That strictly speaking, the the section um, I think it's one thirty eight fifteen a. It, it says that when you get an application, you should hold. You need to hold the hearing within forty five days. Um, it might say something like unless the okay. parties agree okay. uh, after. I've um, it actually goes on somewhere to say that if you know somebody files an application, forty-five days go by, the board hasn't scheduled a hearing, they haven't done anything, the person can actually go petition the ABCC. But all the ABCC can do is hold a hearing and say, "Hey, licensing board, you got to hold a hearing." And I've okay. never even seen that happen. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so. Um, it's uh, so it's not like anything horrible happens if day forty-six arrives and you haven't held okay. the hearing. But um, but that's. It's out there, you know, okay. a month and a half, you know, it's a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. Um, that's, that's not a, that's, that gives us space. And what have you seen as the range of, of these application periods? Uh, I don't think it's been terribly long. You know, the people, people who want one tend to they kind know. of have an ear in the ground. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe 10 days or something. Okay, uh, so um, uh, uh, board, what I'm hearing is that at our next meeting, we sh we should if we if we we should confirm with our uh, you know fellow board members that everyone feels good about this this approach. I mean, it seems the other approach is really untenable. It's just going to be it's a mess to do it the other way, and then um, we can create that open period. I don't know, like January fifth until the. Um, maybe the a day or two before our, our mid January meeting, and and go from there. Is, is there any other guidance between uh, besides the submission uh, the window that we need to tell the public? So the what, Brian, did you have anything? Um, so once can I just add? So this is going to be available January first, and then how much time? So guess on you're suggesting maybe Jan January fifth through the say fifteenth is the application period. I mean, I, yeah. And then I'm, once that I'm, closes, we have forty five days to start the hear to hold the hearings. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So is uh, yeah. that enough time for people to get their applications together, or are we bound in some way to have that start applications immediately on January first? Um. I, you know, I, 
I guess it doesn't hurt. It's, it seems to me that there's that that's enough time. Enough time. Uh, I mean, people, you know, people wouldn't necessarily have to have all their loans synced together or whatever else they might need. Right. Um, okay. You know, of course, you might be hearing from, uh, I don't know, Trader Joe's or something, which <laughs> which already has a store going. They just don't have the liquor license. That's just an example. Right. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I, I don't think, uh, and you know, if, if somebody says, ah, oh, you know, I would have needed a couple of months to, you know, get my ducks in a row before I could really file an application. Well, you know, you're, you guys are supposed to have these licenses out in the public getting exercise serving, yeah. serving okay. the public. So right. uh, I don't think there's anything unreasonable okay. about having that kind of time. Okay. So it's, it, uh, it seems like we've got a, some reasonable leeway and, um, and uh, that if, if, if Brian, if indeed you can work with Steve, then all that we need to decide at our next meeting is when we want to open it and when we want to close the window. Right. Yeah. And so if, if we feel good about those mechanics, then now I, now I want to make my more, um, uh, you know, uh, stretch argument here um, uh, based on the, the criteria two um, of the Emerson College factors. Uh, oh, sorry, not, not two. Um, the uh, the three that it's collected to compensate for the services. Um, Brian, I don't know if you saw that there was an article in the Globe earlier this week about the huge um, cost of of alcohol. It, it, alcohol abuse costs Massachusetts more than five billion yearly. New analysis finds, um, and among other things, we we have. Um, the, like the most licenses per capita, way more than New Jersey. Um, it was interesting. Yeah. That the, the effects, um, um, uh, the, the deaths, the, the other kinds of um, impacts are very significant. And so I, uh, there's no doubt that the town of Amherst's expenses are, are impacted by these kinds of you know, repercussions of alcohol. And and so the the criteria three, if it if you if if it's reasonable to interpret it that way, could really be an extremely large figure. And I, I just I guess I'm wondering what you know what reactions you have to that that uh, kind of uh, approach. Um, I think that's the valid point. I don't think where the law is right now would. Um would affirm that and I, I guess what it triggered in my head as you were talking was um uh you know these you might be <clears throat> aware of all the billion dollar uh, opioid lawsuits yeah. out there yeah and you know many many uh towns have signed on to them uh because you have a variety of you know costs associated um, with uh, with the drug abuse, that you know, same sort of idea. Um, so that's all being done through litigation. But I think that now, if um, you know, if if the Commonwealth came up with some sort of scheme through the general court or something to uh, address those expenses via the licensing process, I mean, I get, I guess there'd be some way to to make that work. Mm -hmm. But I think if the town of Amherst, you know tripled its license fee and said, well, we're doing that because, you know, we can point to, you know, whatever it's police response or EMT or whatever, whatever, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we think those are costs. I, I, I don't think it would be upheld if somebody challenged it in court right okay. the way that it is right now. Okay. 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 All right. So that, that's the, um, uh, but you know, if, if it isn't an enterprising license commission here or there, the law is never going to get, um, you know, catch up. Yeah. So somebody's got to be the path breaker. I guess so. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a silly position. I'll tell you that. Yeah, everybody knows um, that, uh, you know, alcohol abuse causes all sorts of problems and, and costs. That's, that's very true. Um, I just don't think at the moment, I don't think uh, it would justify to the courts, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of 
having a big increase on the license fee. Yeah, they're still going to say, well, this is, this is a fee. You know, it's not, you're not supposed to be really making money off it. But um, how, who has standing to challenge that? Um, because the, well, the, the, the licensee is happy. Um, I mean, I guess someone who, who, who chose not to apply because it was too expensive, would they have standing to challenge? I mean, or would it they, be the state itself? I mean, who would, who, how would that come up? Yeah, the, um, the cases that are out there on this issue, like Emerson College had to do with some, the city of Boston was decided to impose some huge uh, fire it was to to support the fire um department because uh, they were going to have a hard time accessing property something like that so says well well then we're just going to charge you a whole bunch of you know annual inspection fees yeah. um to, to to cover that and it ended up not flying in the court and there's been there's been one over uh, kind of like sewer connection fees um, that's number two that 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 seems like criteria too that the fee is paid by choice that the party paying the fee has the option of not utilizing it seems like that's it, the problem in the example you just gave yeah no that's true uh and they do say that um you know you don't have to um you don't necessarily have to meet all three phases in order for it to be a valid fee mm -hmm. um but i uh i mean that's uh, I, I think somebody, somebody who uh, you know who wanted to wanted to apply but didn't want to pay, you know, all of a sudden this license fee went to ten thousand dollars or something. Yeah, uh, you know, with yeah. standing, I mean, they could certainly try it, and I, I just, I mean, off the off off the cuff tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking it'd be a tough tough argument to tie it to societal costs, you know, within the town. No, no, I I I hear you. I just wonder if it, if 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 that argument could even be made by anyone and and so it might be a kind of an unreviewable excess. Yeah. Or or you know, I I certainly I guess would say let's say somebody doesn't like you know some applicant doesn't like the idea that all of a sudden the license fee got tripled yeah um but they decide well i really want to open the business and so i'll get it okay okay and so then yeah. they would certainly have standing to challenge it then okay okay fair enough so i guess that, that's another way to look fair at enough. it um yeah um uh, and uh um and risk the ire of the of the license commission yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The iron fist. Um, I, I, I think I, I feel, I don't have any other questions. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Hallie, do you have any other questions? No. Nope. So our next meeting is scheduled for, Steve, can you remind me, this is the 29th of December? Yes. But do we want to release the uh, some side of announcement about the the application period before then? Or is that... Well, I, uh, I suppose um, the application period would probably have to be determined by the board, right? Right. Oh, right. So we'll just do um, that on the 29th yeah. and then figure out what the application period is going to be. And then you will work with Brian to yeah. get some put some language together about that. OK. And then yeah, we, can, yeah, would... we can go from there. I feel like we could probably do the application period tonight with the caveat applications to be reviewed within 45 days. And then schedule a meeting with Doug, and every when everybody's back. If people are trying to get this out before January first, yeah. My 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 practical concern about timing and also the the period length is just that um anybody who isn't an established business or doesn't um you know currently have control of an empty unit might find it difficult to secure a lease um okay within that period. And uh, I will have um some interesting questions for you, Brian, about um you know, complete versus incomplete applications and what mm -hmm. qualifies. But um, I don't think we need to get into that right now. But um, OK, I do think so that's we something can. To... OK, so our next meeting on the 29th, we can just set the application period then. That's better. All right. I, 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 I suggest that I wonder if now we can just 
even put on our page, you know, stay tuned for the, for information about, mm. okay. I mean, do, do you, is there any need to do that already? Um, well, there was an article in the Gazette stating that, um, that there is no, there will be an available liquor license. So there is some, some yeah, notice. Why don't, why don't we, why don't we maybe, um, if, if, I guess the question, what, what's the best, what's the most effective way to do that? But I, I think maybe we, we should try to do that and beat 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 uh, beat Scott Murs back. Yes, I got um, beat, beat uh, you know get that out before the article. Yeah, Just I think I think coming. a press release would be wise. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, well, yeah, I suppose it is kind of a uh, you know, impossible to get around the issue too much, Brian. But um, if we know, depending on what the application period is, I mean, if somebody just just submits the the first page of the um, of the application or, or an extremist, you know, if somebody submitted a, you know, a, on written on cardboard paper and crayon, you know, liquor license application, does that qualify as, as something that's submitted and then they have some time to, uh, to follow up with additional documents or is an application considered submitted only when it's complete? Yeah, I'd, I'd say the latter. I, I would, you know, the, the ABCC has a, you know, they kind of have a, yeah. uh, a memo on everything that's required for uh, various kinds of applications, including a brand new one, which this would be. So um, yeah, I think you, if let's say you pick a 10 day period and you've got one or two that are in, in that shape, Steve, you know, they've filed the bare bones, but really haven't filed everything they're supposed to. Uh, you know, I think you tell them, look, you know, we've, we've got four applications that were complete. We're gonna hold hearings on those and make a decision. And, you know, so you, if you want to file something when you get it all together, go ahead, but we might not have one. Yeah, okay. And on the other something side like of that. that, it's kind of black and white. I mean, it's not until midnight in a second on, uh, on the first when, you know, anything that any application submitted before then is, we, we it's, uh, there's no, there's no license. Um, so it, it doesn't. Right doesn't grit until after midnight, but if we've put out the statement before before that time, then then we're okay. Yeah, I, I think the statement is a good a good idea uh, for that reason. Uh, but I, you know, I've, I know I've seen decisions from the ABCC where the licensing board did this, you know, kind of advertised it, held all the hearings, made a choice, and they haven't had a problem with it. So, uh, you know, I think it's, I think that's a perfectly good way to go. Okay. Now, Gaston, was there any reason you suggested January fifth as um, the start date instead of oh, January first? No, I, no, I mean, I, I, I was thinking it shouldn't. It, you know, there should be a period of time um, so that we don't want um, we don't want to make people crazy um, trying to get something and and be at the beginning of the window. I mean, I'm I'm open to making it a you know waiting much longer for it to open. I mean, to, to address your concern, Steve, that um, if we want to have strong applications from uh, any, any businesses that don't completely have the space or something like that, that the, give them a chance to try to put something together. I, I, I think that's what we'd want to discuss with um, Doug and Dylan and, and decide what our view is about how much time before the window starts. Yeah, and um, and Brian, can we can the board set any conditions on how um applications are received? You know, only by paper, I would presume, is kind of the default. But is there a you know times it can be submitted by appointment with as long as the you know appointments given in reasonable time? Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do that. Uh, there's you know. Uh, you know, it's not addressed in the statute, whether it has to be in person or by email or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it seems to me you could have conditions like that. OK, I only bring that up just to make sure what? that um, that people just, you know, I, I get a chance to review it and it's not just um, missed in the shuffle or something, you know. Yeah. Steve, why, why wouldn't you want to use your the, you know, the, the new inspection site or whatever? Uh, that's not really. Um, well suited to uh, to liquor licensing because there's so many specific um, forms that are submitted and um, okay and you know sometimes large scale plans so I generally like to uh, to take those on paper. 
Okay. Uh, which I guess you could do to upload it, but that also leads can lead to a technical barrier and um yep. it sounds uh, good. Yeah, I just, I just would want to make sure you know somebody doesn't uh throw it in the Dropbox at the night before you know the last night it's due and then say oh well, I actually submitted it and um, okay 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 sounds good okay. um all right any other questions for Brian uh otherwise we'll just uh talk to Doug and Dylan on the 29th and get it all set up yep and I'll work with Steve in the meantime to kind of figure out how to put this out there fantastic thank you so okay. much Brian. thank you so all much right. oh, my pleasure Bye. Okay. thank you Brian we'll uh probably talk to you, talk to you again <laughs> <laughs> all right all right good night good night, good night. Okay, um, wonderful. Well, that was helpful. So now we go back to liquor license renewal applications. And Steve, should we just, how did we do this last time? Should we just say? I think we did it by type. Last by time. type? I don't need to read them all out, do I? No, um, no. we could just you know, say all under this, this heading. Um, my only suggestion would be just for the motion to be um, you know, renewed subject to uh, satisfying, you know, all 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 requirements of um of any town departments to to um maybe you can think of a better way to word that, but just making sure um you know there's a few people who still have outstanding work. I think I didn't include most. I think most of them here are good to go, but um there's a few that have you know outstanding workers' comp obligations or taxes they have to straighten out with the collector and things like that. So okay, as long as okay. the motion collects that, then. Okay, great. So the first one is liquor license renewal applications, and we're looking for a motion to approve the renewal pending um, all approval, approval by all other town departments. Maybe I would just say, yeah, conditional on satisfying all requirements and, um, and you know, any obligations to um, yeah, necessary for licensing to town, to the town. Okay, conditional on satisfying all town requirements. And what was that? Any other? Um, yeah, conditionally on, on satisfying any uh, any uh, all requirements and any outstanding obligations to the town that, that are required for licensing. And other outstanding obligations to the town required for licensing. Is there a motion? No moved. Do I move that? Oh, thank you, Gaston. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye, and that is three to zero with two absent. Those licenses are renewed. Uh, next one is common victuals license renewal applications. And is there a motion to approve the renewal with all obligations, et cetera? So moved. Okay, so thank you. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. Uh, next up are secondhand sales license renewal application. That's Goodwill. Um, is there a motion to renew that one with the language used previously? So moved. Thank you, Hallie. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Gaston. Um, Take a vote, Hallie. Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. Uh, next up, live entertainment license renewal applications. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Gaston. Um, take a vote, Hallie. Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. And last, auto dealers renewal, auto dealers license renewal application, uh, North Amherst Motors. Is there a motion to renew that one? So moved. Thank you, Hallie. And Second. Gaston. Thank you, Gaston. Uh, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. So that's done. And uh, there are some more coming up, Steve, you said, just a few others. Yep. So this is the uh, certainly the bulk of them. There's a few other ones with. Um, uh, I, I don't think that any of them really have big problems, but, you know, problems I just wanted to resolve before I put it up in just a few that are running a little late. So 
Um, this is pretty much everything. Okay, great. Thank you. But we will um, have a few for the next one, but we'll certainly be meeting anyway, so. Right. Okay, uh, next up, we're gonna go back to discussion items, rental registration. Okay. How um, that? It's good. So um, Hallie and I met and we identified a number of issues to think about. Um, we could do that, but I wonder if, I, I guess I'm torn because it would be nice to go through this with uh, Doug and Dylan as well, so we could have a conversation yeah. with the five, you know, the six of us. Um, on the other hand, I don't want to inflate our end of December meeting, but I'm, uh, I mean, I'm fine uh, postponing it. This will, will only take kind of ten minutes to go over the points, and we can have a conversation about it. So, um, if unless anyone thinks we should go into it. I, no, I, I'm fine I, waiting till December 29th. Uh, okay. Hallie, is that all right with you? Just yes. so that Doug and Dylan can be here? Would that be okay? And I think that would probably be better. Okay. Does that sound all right, Steve? Sounds good if to me. Like, okay, great. So we will put that off until December 29th. Um, all right, annual report. Steve sent a copy around. We managed to get it in. The format was based on last year's. And thank you again, Steve, for taking what I gave you and wrestling it into good condition. So, <laughs> it was as um, good condition as received. <laughs> no. So um, I don't know if you have any questions about it. It's uh, pretty basic, pretty short. Um, and the town, yeah, the town council meeting is next. Is it, It's Monday, right, Steve? Yes, she did invite the board. So let me make sure I get that information right. Um, I think it's the 19th. Um, yes, the state of the town presentation is on Monday, December 19th at 5.30 p.m. Um, the report will be in the packet. And if you'd uh, like to watch the state of the town, they'll be live in the town room on Zoom and on Amherst Media. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, so liquor license renewals, was there more on this topic or was this? Um, I don't believe there is anything really. Nope, um, moving along. Okay. Um, and then the last is the agenda. So it sounds like we have upcoming meeting agenda. We're going to have this new license, the schedule for the new uh, license applications in January and rental registration. And those will probably take up most of the time. Is there anything else we should need to put on there, do you think? And any other renewals that we have? Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly have some renewals, but- um... Okay. I don't think. Oh, uh, is the can let me let me just remember the day of the week and things because. Uh, oh no, what is it? It's the 29th we're talking about, right? Yes, the 29th. It, let me ask you all. I I guess it's too bad that um, uh, Dylan and and Doug aren't aren't here, but I wanted to ask if that morning could possibly work. The 29th, yes, the morning of the 29th instead of the 5 p.m. time. Is is that a, is, is that available at this late stage, uh, Steve? Um, in terms of my schedule? Um, and and we, we just have to give the right, I mean, well, anyway, for, I got, in terms of your schedule and, and process, would, we would just have to put that in the next, um, in the next agenda, right? Yeah, I mean the um, the times are not set in stone, so uh, you know I get the board agrees. What, what what would work best for the two of you? Well, my surgery's been postponed till January, so I will be free. So any time okay. works for me. Okay. I'm I'm asking because we I, I I didn't have it on my calendar by accident, and we're we're spending the, we're going to Boston to spend the night, and and so it's actually. 5 p.m. is very inconvenient for me, um, given that I made this plan. And so morning would be, would work just fine. So what time in the morning? And, I mean, anything that, anything that works for all of you. Um, I, I guess the, Dylan doesn't always know his schedule in advance, but he might by tomorrow. Um, um, Steve, and, would you be uh, able to Doug, email Doug and Dylan yeah, and see what I their schedules are? And I'll an email I'll, to them. Yeah, I guess that would, anything, any time in the morning would be, Maybe, would be fine for me. Could we do a 
quick survey, like nine to 11, 10 to, you know, see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, mean, I don't really know how, I don't know how long we expect the meeting to go. Um, I mean, this one went could, fairly quickly, surprisingly. Could be, uh, could yeah. be 70 minutes at most, I think, I guess. 50 to 70. Yeah. So I'll try to budget. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if 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 all three of you have totally free mornings, I can just call around to Doug and Dylan and um, just find a time that, uh, you know, we could get an hour and 15 minutes in. Uh, something later in the morning would work better for me. But yeah, 10, okay. 40, yeah, 1045 yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, so. on would work a lot yeah. better. Yeah. That, that, that would be okay for me. Okay. All right. Alrighty. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any no? Any topics not anticipated forty eight hours prior to the meeting? I don't have any. No. Okay. I mean no. that you know that that I think that article from the Globe is really worth kind of taking in a little bit um, because we we haven't we're not really bringing all of that into our consideration. All of the ripple effects. Of, of alcohol. I mean, I, if there's a lot there, um, I, I, and I'm, I wonder if there's a, somebody that we could invite to help us be a little more informed and, and maybe imaginative about how it might, um, might influence what we do. Mm. And what are you uh, envisioning exactly Gaston on, on the local level? I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, um, you know, we we've taken we've done some very minor things that I think are are meaningful like making sure there's food at all times but are there any other um, things on the edges at the margins that that might be um, that might be helpful to do or even just uh, ways of bringing more awareness um, in the town and and kind of connecting the dots. I mean I think. For us to financially levy like a not a tax, but you know, like a surcharge to liquor licenses, I think we would need to find a way to demonstrate the impact to the town cost wise, mm -hmm. what be it police staffing on DUIs or emergency services called. So that might be a step to just reach out to the police and the fire department. And to see if they keep any sort of documentation about alcohol related incidents and calls as a starting point. So I'll, that's a great idea, Hallie. Also, Steve, do you remember there were those meetings that were held at UMass a couple of years ago? I went to a few of them um, with representatives from sort of the, I think it was the police and the fire department and the campus, all about uh, alcohol awareness. I can't remember the name of it now, no, and I don't remember. I don't remember that going. either. I think they do yeah. those for students. It was like young. the college alcohol. A campus and community something. Campus. Yeah. In, yeah. It was like CCC or something. Coalition, I believe, yeah. Yeah, it was really useful. But I mean, that would be one, if that body is still going, that would be one place to, one group of people we could talk to about that. Yeah, definitely. We can, um, yeah, maybe put that on the agenda for January and, and dive into that a bit more. And yes, think we, things, ideas. Good idea. Let's do that for one of the meetings in January. I, um, I guess an, another thing I, uh, um, would be to just email this article to our, um, uh, our health, public health, um, wh what's her name? Uh, Jen Brown is the public health director. Jen Brown and 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 you know see if if she has if it you know makes her want to give us any feedback. Yeah, I, I can definitely do so. Okay, that would be awesome. All right, thank you, All right. Steve. All right, anything All right. else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Hold on, hold on. Sorry, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Hallie. Is second. There a second. Thank you, Gaston. Uh, take a roll call. Um, Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye uh, three to zero with two absent. The um, We are adjourned at 5.52 p.m. Yeah. Okay.
Thanks, all everybody. Right. And Steve, thank you for thank all of your so work much. on renewals and the license. I know yes. that's all. So thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. Yeah. Definitely. Always a busy time of year. And how time to start Christmas shopping. <laughs> yeah, right. well, thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Have a good night, yeah. everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.